Hi, I'm Forrest Tanaka, and we're going to do another product photo this week uh, of this hard drive, Seagate hard drive. But I'm going to have a little fun this time because instead of our usual product shot where I'm basically surrounding the photo with lights and just filling it with as much light as possible, this time we're going to light it from below using a, a, a transparent surface. And so this time I'm going to show you the final photo to begin with. So here it is. So you can see it has a very modern look with white everywhere. And I give it a little touch of having the LEDs show up on the front panel. So let's take a look at how I did this. Okay, we've gone back in time to before I took that photo and to see the setup. Now, since this is all about shooting through the surface that the product is sitting on, you need a good frame, uh, a good setup to have a light from below illuminate the surface. And the surface, of course, has to be translucent. So to do that, you need something for the surface to rest on that gives space for a light from below. And for that, I built this uh, uh, frame out of PVC. It just has four legs and three sides on the top. I left out the fourth side because I don't want a shadow of this uh, pole going across here showing up in the um, uh, surface. So instead, I set this bar down here to be out of the way and still give it some strength because uh, there can be quite a bit of weight on here, as you will see. So I have that. Now let's set up the illumination from below. And for that, I'll be using <clears throat> this uh, 580 EX uh, with a radio popper to trigger it remotely. And I'll just set that down below and I'll turn it on. I have it set to pretty low power. Right now it's uh, 164th plus 0.7 power and the zoom is set to 28 millimeters. It's set pretty wide because and I not only want it to illuminate the entire surface, I also want it to illuminate the backdrop. I just have this uh, backdrop holder that's normally used to hold muslin backgrounds, and I just put a white bed sheet on it. Uh, and that will be our white background. And I have it separated a little bit back from the uh, frame that I set up so that the, the strobe will have some space to illuminate it. Uh, another way you can do it is to set it over tuck it under your surface like this. Uh, I just chose not to do that for this one because I really wanted a, a even background. I am going to get a line where the end of the surface ends and this backdrop starts. I'll just eliminate that in Photoshop. That should be really easy. So now if I just put the strobe down there <clears throat> it's going to cause uneven lighting on the translucent surface. So I need to even that out. So let's take a look at how I solve that problem. Okay, to solve the problem of uneven lighting from the strobe from below, there's our strobe, is I'm using this other frame. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, like the shiny keyring video, you've seen this before to be used as a light box. It's, again, just a frame of PVC. In this case, I'm gonna use it as a baffle. It's going to distribute the light uh, from that bottom strobe more evenly on the upper surface. So I have this frame and I'm just gonna cover it in what used to be a pillowcase that I've cut apart. And I'll just drape it over. As evenly as I can here. And there, now we have our bottom illumination with a baffle. Set that back a little bit. Okay, so the next step is to set up the surface. So for the translucent surface, I'm using this piece of translucent white uh, acrylic. And it's, uh, I forgot how thick it was. It's not very thick. Um, probably like a little more than a 16th inch thick. And you can put that on here like this. And right away, we've got a big problem. 
it's not that rigid and so you know it's already sagging and there's no weight on it yet so once you put the hard drive on it it's just going to sag a little bit and with something especially that's kind of flattish like that hard drive you're going to see that curve really obviously and that's really going to be no good so we need a way to support this completely flat uh, one way might be like a metal mesh of some kind but of course you'll get the stripes uh, shadows of the stripes on the surface so what we really need is either a thick piece of clear acrylic below this one uh, which will get pretty heavy but probably not unreasonably it will be pretty expensive this uh, uh, I think for this size of uh, acrylic in clear uh, at the same thickness which is not very much it costs about $20 uh, US for a three foot by three foot or about one meter square piece with it with it a lot thicker it's gonna be pretty expensive so instead I'm going to use a piece of glass uh, depending on where you are that may end up being cheaper uh, I happen to already have one which is just my glass coffee table that I'll bring over this is pretty thick and it's pretty heavy you gotta be careful not to knock this down the frame down okay so now that is really flat and solid and for that now we can put this translucent sheet on it and now we've got a totally flat translucent surface so now with that we can illuminate it from below but we need some light on top otherwise we'll just have kind of a shadow of an object so for that I'm gonna bring in this uh, alien bees strobe and let's see got to raise it up quite a bit and if you've seen my other videos you've seen me use this on just about everything else it's really handy point it down we got a radio popper to trigger it and we'll turn it on so now we're lit from above and below uh, let's get the product wherever it is oh there it is so here's the hard drive all set to go I'll put it right here now why am I arranging it this way well normally for a product shoot you're just going to surround it with light which is why um, you might use a light box and surround it by three uh, maybe four strobes sometimes in this case I'm going to be using two one from below and this one reason is if you overload it with light you'll never see the light from below so you have to be a little bit subtle with the light from above um, and also this particular hard drive has sort of a fancy LED system so if we faced it towards the upper strobe we'll never see the LEDs no matter what so I'm facing it away <clears throat> this side will be in some darkness uh, which will let us see the strobe the LEDs really well while the strobe lights up the, the uppercase a little bit and the side quite a bit and so that should do it so let's take a shot for this shot I'm going to be using a 5d mark II and a 70 to 200 f 2.8 L lens now another option and a really good option actually is uh, using a wider lens like a 24 to 70 then you can get in really really close and give the product a lot more distortion which makes it look uh, bigger maybe more imposing and that's actually a really good way to go I'm just choosing to go with very little distortion this time just as a personal choice so I'm going with this longer lens and I'll be shooting from quite a distance minimum focus distance on this lens is about four feet and I'll be just a little bit beyond four feet uh, with a tripod my uh, remote shutter release here's the radio popper transmitter so with that let's go take the first shot <clears throat> all right I'm all set the strobe test button shows that both strobes are working 
and the camera I have it set to let's see 1 1 25th of a second with Canon strobes the maximum sync speed of the strobe and the 5D Mark II is 1 200th of a second but I have it set down because I'm using the Alien Bees which is a slower strobe so you can start to get a little bit of the um, like the dark bottoms of the frames in some cases with the Alien Bees. So I have it set down for safety to 1 1 25th of a second and at ISO 320 and F11. The F11 at this distance and this uh, zoom level will uh, give us It'll just start to go out of focus at the back of the product, which is the effect I wanted. And the backdrop should be totally out of focus. So here we go with the first shot. Ready. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. The light's looking nice, nice and soft. Everything looks nice and white. The main problem is the reflection is pretty washed out and that's because we've got a light from above and a light from below this table pretty much washing it out so I'm going to try to improve that reflection as the next step okay to solve the problem with the uh, uh, light there being too much light all around the object and the shadows being washed out I'm gonna flag the lower strobe and I'm just gonna use this piece of foam core it came from a craft store um, it was actually for a kid's uh, like a science fair presentation, so they have tons of these. And I cut off one of the flaps, and it doesn't have to be this kind. You could use just a straight piece too, if that fits your situation. But this works nicely here because I can uh, set this up this way and adjust how much of the front edge that I block. So I'll just start from there and see how that goes. Oh, the other thing I'm doing is I wanted to raise the uh, hard drive off the surface just by a little bit. So I'm using just this uh, CD, paper or CD envelope to do that. And it gets it just a little bit off the surface. So let's give that a try. Okay, we're all set up for the next shot. We've got the flag in front of the uh, lower strobe. We've got a little gap for the hard drive. So now let's give this a shot. All right, so with the foreground flight, the reflection is looking much stronger, much better looking. And uh, the glow underneath is a little bit more obvious as well. So got a couple things fixed here. Uh, so our next step is to uh, turn on the LEDs. So let's see how I did that. All right, the last step is to turn on these LEDs. Now to do that, of course, I had to get it plugged into power. And well, let's try that now. Now it's powering up and I can hear it spinning up. But of course the LEDs still don't turn on because it's looking for a USB signal. So I've got my laptop here. So let's get that hooked up. Now, of course, these cables are going to be in the shot, which isn't so good. But we'll just have to have Photoshop rescue us from that. Are the LEDs on? They are on. Now, let's get these cables into a nice position so that they're easy to Photoshop out. No real way to hide these. Just do the best we can so that we can use content aware fill to get rid of them, most likely. Okay. All right, so this uh, hard drive has a feature, I guess, of the uh, LEDs kind of pulse slowly. So I'd like to capture it just as it's uh, at its peak. And so we do have to pay attention to that. Here we go. We're dark, light, dark light well you can see that really didn't help at all the LEDs don't look on at all even though when we were looking at it they really are on and the reason is they're just not bright enough for the camera's exposure um, they're actually pretty dim and so um, we're gonna have to do something to let these show up without affecting the overall exposure so let's take a look at that next all right, since that was so dark, 
I'm going to set the shutter speed to uh, one half of a second. Now, why? <clears throat> the way strobes work, or when you're taking a photograph with strobes, is that the length of the shutter speed brightens anything, anything that's lit by something that's not a strobe. So, let's see, does that make sense? Uh, so, if you're taking uh, a picture at a party, say, and it's kind of dark, if you take a, uh, a flash photo of someone, you'll see that person and nothing else. The background will be totally gone because it'll just be too dim and the flash from your flash probably wasn't bright enough to reach it. If you slow down the shutter speed, then that'll give time for the background to burn into the sensor. Now, that makes it sound like your subject is going to be totally blown out from the strobe. But the thing is, the strobe only lasts a tiny fraction of a second uh, compared to the shutter speed. If, if like, uh, this Canon strobe is uh, set to a low power, and it is set to a low power, 1 64th, it probably lasts only like 1 8 thousandths of a second. And so, regardless of how long your uh, strobe is set for, your, or your uh, shutter speed is set for, the subject that's illuminated by the strobe isn't going to change its exposure at all. So, in this case, since this strobe and the strobe from below will light this up, we can set it to the shutter length, shutter speed to a half a second. That won't change that at all. It'll just let all the ambient light, including the LED, to burn in. So I will set it to half a second. Problem is, it'll also let these lights burn into the image. So we'll get this yellowish, maybe greenish light uh, reflecting off the top. So I have to turn off all the house lights as well. And so, let's give that a try. I will disappear from the video. And if I can find my way to the camera here. There we go. And now again, I'll, even though I'm setting the shutter speed to half a second, I'll still wait for the maximum for that uh, peak of light to come in. So it's dark now. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. The LEDs now show up and uh, everything is lit properly. So that really works, keeping the long shutter speed. I actually eventually adjusted it to two seconds to make this photo, uh, to make the LED show up uh, quite a bit better than when I had it set for half a second. So the not last step is to clean this up in Photoshop, and that's the result. Got rid of the cables and made the background a lot smoother. And that's the final photo. So that's it. And so I hope that was clear and helpful. And uh, I wanted to thank everyone again for subscribing. I finally hit 700 subscribers this week, so that was just amazing to me. Uh, I have a few more to get before I get to the likes of uh, Ryan Higa, but uh, hopefully we're on the way. And hopefully you're, you guys are getting as much out of this as I have. So I will see you next time. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.